morning to you. Monday morning, grey, gloomy. They said it'd be dry and sunny, but uh, it isn't, but never mind. Um, where are we? Well, over my shoulder, 600 yards back, you'd be in the Breton Centre. So this one is pretty close to uh, urban Peterborough, but we're heading for Marham. Um, what can I tell you about Marham? Anglo-Saxon agricultural settlement like many of the villages we've done recently but there's a little bit of history there so I hope to find some of it and make sense of it so uh, yeah we're scooting on from Breton Centre towards Marham in the distance there is uh, Marham Lodges or our Marham Lodges they're 200 years old and they're grade 2 listed I can't tell you much about them, doesn't seem to be much history apart from the fact they are 200 years old. Um, they're tied cottages, or were, and I'm sure they still are tied cottages. They belong to the Milton Estate. If you work here um, and you were lucky, you got the chance to live with your family in Marham Lodges. They're well off the beaten track. Can't see them from the road, only from this path. But yeah, thatched building, semi-detached, early 1800s. Yeah, very nice. If I can follow the signpost well enough, I hope to sort of wind my way into Marham without using the road uh, to try to find Marham Brook, then walk in via the church. That's the plan. As I mentioned uh, a few seconds ago, it's uh, Definitely an Anglo-Saxon settlement. There's an old Anglo-Saxon chronicle, I think they used to call them, dating to the middle part of the 600s where Marham was mentioned. So absolutely Anglo-Saxon and absolutely an agricultural settlement as many of them were. Wasn't a lot else to do back then. Used to be four or five different farms here. Everybody here worked on the farms. Um, it's still, if you've ever walked through Marham, it still has that sort of uh, agricultural vibe to it. There are still working farms there. It's all part of the Milton Estate. Um, but I suspect not everybody that lives there now works on the farms. And uh, there's probably an, an ageing population here without being too cruel. But as I said earlier, I hope to find one or two things of interest. Uh, starting with the church, which I hope to follow Marham Brook along to in a few moments. Ferry Meadows, three miles. I think we're straight on here. From what I recall, public footpath, that will do. Where's my brook gone? It's going under, underneath us, I think. Yeah. Plenty of water on it. That's Marron Brook coming down towards us. Uh, kicks off somewhere just west of uh, Castor Hanglands and gathers pace all the way down through Marham and I think it actually hooks over towards Warrington after leaving Marham. I'll need to check a map on that one but I'm pretty sure it uh, is it Cuckoo's Hollow or whatever in Warrington it heads over into that direction and spills into the waterways on the other side of uh, of Warrington. But I'm hoping it will lead us through to the church which I can see in the distance. A 
a pretty pretty little waterway for this part of the world How old do you think these, uh, I say lovely willow trees, they're not in flower yet, obviously, or in leaf yet, but uh, yeah, how old do you think these willow trees are? 100 years, 200 years? They reckon they date back about 400 years to the 1600s. I mean, they're a bit gnarly, but they're still very much alive. Yeah, 1600s, maybe 1700s, around that sort of time. These willows have been growing alongside Marron Brook all the way to the church. That's pretty fantastic. Very impressive pollarded willows. I'm sure they're not pollarded anymore, but they were for many years for whatever purpose. Basket making, heaven knows what. Um, yeah, fantastic uh, trunks on them. They do look every bit three to four hundred years old. Long may they live on for another three to four hundred years. Just looking across to uh, Marham Church, we'll be. Uh, going close up in a moment it's probably good to grab a snapshot from a distance here because it really shows off what many of the churches around here are all about you know we talk about them being Norman churches well that's when they started and on the far left there the tower uh, is a Norman tower a surviving Norman tower you've then got the nave of the church which is immediate to its immediately to its right which I think uh, is a little bit more recent but not a lot modified very much over the years and then on the right the bit that doesn't look like it fits with the grand windows i think that's mid 1500s so you can see those sort of bolted bits on and that's how many of the churches in this area um, that's the pattern they followed whatever they started at people bolted bits on as the years went by and as architectural styles um, changed and this is a classic example of bits and bobs from different eras, windows from different eras. We'll see it better close up, but it just gives you a better perspective across the field. I remember the first time I came to uh, Marham Church, the first thing that struck me as being a bit unusual was this wall that sat in front of the church. It almost looked like a moat. I was doing some research for this walk and uh, this wall is what's known as, wait for it, a ha-ha, that's H-A-H-A, -ha, and that dates back in architectural terms to France, that's where it came from, that terminology, and it means a ha-ha is a wall on the one side, i.e. where we're looking now, it is most definitely a wall, meant to keep grazing animals out of the churchyard, primarily sheep, I would assume, but on the other side of the wall, it's meant to be invisible so that you can look from the churchyard out across the fields and it just looks very, very much how they would want it to look. They don't want you to see a wall. So it's a kind of wall on one side, but not on the other, as we'll see in a mo. But yeah, that's what's known as a ha-ha. Crazy. You think they'd come up with something better. So there you go. We're in the churchyard now looking out and I guess you can't really see the wall. Well, you can, but not, not too much. It doesn't spoil the view. And that was the idea of a ha-ha. Some fantastic uh, cedar trees they are in the churchyard. Very typical of churchyards. Cedar trees are always placed in there. They've got some purpose, which I've forgotten. I did read up about it, but uh, uh, these have been around for a couple of hundred years at least.
So okay, now we're close up. Uh, that tower is Norman. Um, but I don't doubt it. Uh, the windows, those sort of lancet windows, those narrow thin windows, are not typical Norman windows they, they're more of the sort of 1200 so whether they were added at a later date I don't know um, I'm happy to go by the textbooks though and just call it a Norman tower that has survived since uh, 1080 something I think it was this church uh, so just before the 1100s and then you've got the nave next to it which kind of goes with it the bits on the side would have been added in later centuries and on the far right, you've got the, uh, the chancel, which was built by one of the Fitzwilliams. I think it was Sir William Fitzwilliam in the 1500s. There'd been a fire. There'd been a fire in the 1500s. Don't know quite how a church burns, as it's pretty much all stone, but it did. And that was an excuse to redo the chancel. And clearly he wasn't too bothered about making it look like it fits with the rest of the church. It's taller, wider and windows from the period that he built it. Churches are always full of uh, what I call ghost doorways, ghost arches. I mean, what is that arch about there? If that's a Norman tower, um, that almost goes behind it. Very strange. Yeah, still a little bit bothered by those windows. They, they don't... I was going to say they don't look Norman, but maybe they do. Rounded arch at the top, typical Norman. That's a lovely gravestone. Elizabeth and William Laxton. Uh, William Laxton died 1880. And his wife, Elizabeth, died, I think that says 1865 or 6. I'll have a dig around, see if I can find something out about uh, those two. And if I can, I'll add it at the bottom of the screen. Quite a lot of uh, chest tombs, I think they call these, for obvious reasons. I always used to think they had bodies within them, but I'm told, or I've read up, um, that the body is underground, as it is with all graves, and the chest tomb is built on top of the grave. You can never read too much about these. These are old, um, 1700s, I think these were. I mean, this one's very impressive. In memory of Robert Vergette, died 1846, aged 43 years or so. Of his wife, died September the 4th, 1863. Yeah, as much as you can have fantastic gravestones, they've got fantastic gravestones here. Spectacular, really. I'd be surprised if some of these weren't listed. As I say, mostly about 1700s, these uh, chest tombs. It may not go with the rest of the church, but these windows a spectacular on the chancel. Fifteen hundreds. Bit of medieval graffiti there, no less. There's a Fitzwilliam grave there. Evelyn Wentworth Fitzwilliam. Um, I mean, this chancel was not only built by a member of the Fitzwilliam family, but inside, which unfortunately we won't be seeing, 
there are very, very many um, commemorative tombs and stones and whatever for the Wentworth, sorry, for the Fitzwilliam family. It's very much a shrine to the uh, Fitzwilliam family and probably still is. That's the other side of that uh, Fitzwilliam grave. That one is George Wentworth Fitzwilliam. I get the impression something was in the middle of this grave at one point. There's a bit of a broken stone there. There's a sort of stone wreath. Uh, there's another broken stone down here. Yeah, it's a shame it's not as it was. Look at this. Tremendous. Chiseled into the wall in the 1700s, even the early 1700s there, 1718. Whether they were the stonemasons, but I don't think a whole lot was done in the 1700s here. Or just some scallywags from the village. Certainly have left their mark. Uh-huh. That's what I was looking for. There's a couple of circles there with like poppies inside. These were um, slightly sinister um, marks that you get on quite a few churches, although I've never seen them before outside of a photograph. Uh, these were put there to uh, attract evil spirits, which would then be embedded and trapped within the wall of the church. It was an old medieval, probably goes back to 1200s, 1300s, these. Um, it's a bit like a witch's mark. And it was thought to attract, as I say, evil spirits that would then somehow get absorbed into the stonework and would not enter the church. But yeah, a bit Blair Witch-like, these are. We're around the back of the church now, which is the north side of the church. I was reading up somewhere, which I didn't know, not being a uh, church goer myself, I have to confess. Um, people got buried on the south side of the church, not on the north side. It was considered the people who got buried on the north side were usually people that uh, didn't warrant being buried on the south side. I won't go any further than that because that isn't a tradition that applies today, and I don't want to put down the people of, of a more recent era that are buried here but back in medieval days it was considered that uh, yeah if you were not the sort of person that uh, the parish was necessarily proud of I'll leave it at that you got buried on the north side excellent that's what I was looking for very hard to see these now they're pretty much getting buried grave slabs, um, not vertical gravestones, but horizontal gravestones, um, and they're old. There's one, two, three alongside each other here. They will date back about 800 years from now, um, 1300s, 1200s. Um, yeah, you just, I mean, they, they faded out and got replaced, as it were, by vertical gravestones pretty quickly but yeah these are very old and you don't see many because I suspect they get buried they're like the lids of uh, tombs and gravestones if you've seen our caster or my caster church video um, sometimes these get pulled up and put on top of walls to act as like coping stones on walls because of their shape and uh, that's what they've got at caster but these are still where they should be in the ground Another very nice horizontal grey stone there. In fact, there's one or two down here. Never used to have anything on them except a cross, basically, as these have got. There's certainly some very spectacular stones here. Sad to see some of these crosses have been, uh, I say, knocked down. They may have fallen down naturally. There's quite a few of them have hit the deck. Um, 
this impressive grave belonged to John Thomas Darby um, and Louisa Darby, in fact it's Louisa Darby's grave. The Darby families are very, very familiar, well-known um, family from Marham. They were based at uh, Marham Farm, which we'll see in a short while. And they lived there for well over a hundred years. And I think their family goes back on the Milton estate three or four hundred years. We'll pick that up later on. But yeah, the Darby name is uh, a very well-known name in these parts. Very impressive churchyard, even if the church is bits and pieces. Fascinating place. Looking across from the uh, churchyard to Home Farm, because it's very, very difficult. In fact, it's, uh, it's a private driveway, so you can't walk up to it. There's some nice grade two listed buildings there. And uh, Home Farm was one of the big farms in this area. and. I read somewhere it was a model farm as well, um, which was similar to what we had at Upton. So they used it very much to sort of show off latest technologies to the other farms around here. It was like one of the Milton Estates home farms, along with the Upton one. But yeah, there's some nice, very old barns at the back and uh, the farmhouse there at the right, probably 1700s, early 1800s, that sort of time. Right, leaving the churchyard now, heading in towards the village. Plenty of yellow aconitum, I think they are. I always call them that. Breaking into flower now. Spring has sprung, not quite. So a row of old buildings coming up on our left now that were built in the 1620s, I think it was 1626. The first of which is the old parsonage, which predates the vicarage that we'll see later on. So I don't know how long this was in effect, the vicarage. It's in the right place, it's near the church, but yeah. This was the old parsonage, always called the old parsonage, as it says up on the wall. And you see it runs into the next building, which is of the same age. Just walking up towards Home Farm, but uh, as the sign says, there ain't no way through, unfortunately. It'd be nice to get a bit closer to some of the buildings and some lovely barns around the back, all grade two listed. This is an absolute cracker of a building, or two buildings, Forester's Lodge and Sawmill Cottage. I'm not quite sure whether it's two halves of one building, I think it is. Uh, dates, I know it dates to about 1840. Um, it looks older, but fantastic. Fantastic. Lovely thatch, lovely chimneys, just a lovely building. It says Sawmill Cottage on the gate, but the next gate down says Forester's Lodge, and they both lead to the same building. They look like semis, as it were. Wonderful. That sort of three level building, just right of centre, it used to be the school. Um, 1864, built by the Fitzwilliams. Uh, didn't quite make a hundred years, I think it closed in 1959. Um, uh, it was modernised fairly recently and it's still just about um, recognisable from the old photographs, which I'll put up in a minute. But yeah, much modernised now, of course, but 
was the school building. So I'm sure somebody watching this probably went to the school. It's the buildings that they say in that state, not the big tall one. I think it's the two to the right here, the lower levels. I'll put the old picture up in the corner. And that's what it looks like today. I don't know if you can recognize it to be honest, but it was the old school building. Couple of nice cottages up here, I say cottages. I think they are each single cottages now, but undoubtedly were two cottages originally, dating back to the 1700s, two knocked into one. I always look for signs of the old doors, but I don't see them. But yeah, that's a two into one job. And so I suspect is this one. No idea what that building is on the left there, but it looks like it's quite old. It's got this big blank. I think it's a window rather than for a sign at the top there. I think it's probably a farm building, been modernized. But it looks fairly old. It's not listed, it's not detailed anywhere. The manor house. Sixteen to seventeen hundreds, not sure which, but around that time. I saw a picture of that. I thought that must be old, some sort of Tudor barn. Uh, but I'm assured from what I've read that it's not authentic. It's more recent than that. Uh, still looks good. This is Marham Brook as it escapes Marham and heads across towards Warrington. Plenty of water on it. Not sure we're going to get a close up view of this as a tall wall, but that is Poplar Farm, or was Poplar Farm, or Poplar Farm House, uh, should I say, with the thatch on the left there. Uh, dates back to the 1600s, late 1600s. building on the left was obviously, well it was a building once, it was a barn of some sort, it's got ventilation slits in the side which doesn't make any sense if it's a wall. Uh, it's obviously been turned into a wall but it used to be a barn that adjoined the farmhouse. Just coming up to water end to cottages on our left which is a lovely set of cottages that dates back into the sort of mid 1600s. They are pretty old. Lovely looking cottages. Very nice. It's actually marked as Poplar Farmhouse, but which means I got it wrong. That is Poplar Farmhouse, and to the left, that's a barn with a triangular ventilation hole to the left there. You don't see many of those. But yeah, that's Poplar Farmhouse, so I got that one wrong. Very nice. which means water end cottages must be further along this path. Should study my maps more carefully. Is that an old well? Possibly. I know it's got a lid on it now, but that could be an old well used by the cottages and the farm. I don't know, we could be making that up, but yeah, it could easily be an old well. Some old stones here that have been a part of it by the looks. Don't know, might be wrong. Looks like a well. I think these must be water in cottages coming up. If not, I give up.
No idea. It's nice though. If it is water end cottages, it's 1600s, mid 1600s. Nice thatch with dogs on the roof. Thatched, thatched dogs. Two lovely buildings there. 1633, the one on the right, um, which is Marham Farmhouse. Uh, very, very old. It's where the Derby family lived for very, very many years. Um, until quite recently. In fact, it might still be there, I don't really know. Um, but certainly for most of the last hundred years, residents of the Derby family. Hearn Cottage on the left, which is adjoined to it. I think that goes back to the 1800s. Used to be a schoolhouse upstairs, used to be a dairy downstairs. Um, nowadays, res. Very nice. Some very old windows in the Marham farmhouse. One or two have suggested that they date back older than the building. So whether they came from another building, one assumes they did. They do look kind of uh, medieval to me. Pretty much the exit point for Marham Brook. As it leaves Marham Farmhouse and heads off towards Warrington, which is behind me. In case you didn't believe me, there's Marham Brook. And on the horizon, the urban sprawl of industrial Warrington, or the industrial side of Warrington, with a train, perfectly timed. Still in the proximity of uh, Marham Farmhouse. I don't know if there's any significance to this. Um, <laughs> moated Island, it appears like. I'd love to tell you this has got history and it's medieval and all that sort of stuff, but I have no knowledge of it at all. If I find any out anything when I edit the video, I'll stick it on the screen. Otherwise, it's just a nicely, uh, nicely landscaped moat. I mean, the willow tree isn't that old, but it isn't that young either, so it could be old. I'll let you know if I find anything. Just coming past Hearn Cottage again. As I say, prior to the school opening in 1864 in the village that we saw earlier, um, the upstairs of this cottage was used by the Milton Estate as the first school in Marham. I don't think it lasted long. And then the wonderful Marham farmhouse. Yeah, those deep recessed windows downstairs in particular suggest older than the 1600s. But I think the windows are older than the house. Nice sundial on the wall there. It says 1800 above it, added in 1800. Very nice. Back to the village. Coming back to the main road now through Marham to what kind of, I suppose, is the heart of the village, where the village green is, uh, although it's moved over the road um, over the years. It used to be on this side of the road, on the corner here. It's now on the other side of the road. Probably makes more sense, there's a bit more room over there. On our right somewhere is the blacksmith's cottage dating back to early 1800s. Which I thought was strange at first because the smith is down the other end of the village, which we'll see in a bit. But I guess his uh, living quarters were a separate entity to his uh, workplace. Yeah, the village green used to be on this grass here, or at least um, the, the, the village cross was. 
Not sure it qualifies as a village green, but uh, yeah, Blacksmith's Cottage. I don't know if this is the nearest one or the furthest one. It's the furthest one, the bigger one. And if someone has said that's the smithy on the right, then I'd buy it, but it isn't. And that's the Blacksmith's Cottage. And there's the village green, if you want to call it that. It used to be the village pound, right in front of us on the left where this tree is. It used to be the village pound, like what we saw in uh, Sutton. Long since gone, but it was right here, we're walking into it. Now the war memorial. First World War. Much respect to those people listed. From a historical perspective, the bit we're looking at is more significant because that is the base of an Anglo-Saxon cross. As ever, that's all there is, just the base, and it's been elevated on top of these steps now, which are obviously added more recently, but that's an Anglo-Saxon cross, so that'll go way, way back way, way back, many, many hundreds of years. There you go, this monument, the base of which only remaining stone of the old village cross was erected in 1920. In undying memory of the men of Marham who fell in the Great War. But yeah, that stone it sits on is a lot older than that. And I think Mr. E. Abbott was the sole loss in the Second World War from the village, as I understand it. Respect to them all. This base here used to have a wooden cross on a very nice village sign, Betty Andrews, year 2000, to commemorate the millennium, and it's gone. Again, I hope it wasn't vandalised. I suspect it might have just rotted. Hopefully they'll put it back up. I'll put a photograph up at least to show you what it looked like. The buildings on the right there are the village arms houses. Looked after and paid for by the Fitzwilliam estate. Their contribution to the village and those needing housing. Dating back to uh, 1700s, if I remember rightly. Uh, I think there used to be four. I might be wrong, but it looks like there's more than two. There's only two now. Um, I don't know. I think I saw a reference somewhere that there were four, but I can't quite see how that could be four. It could be. It could be. I'm looking at the windows arrangements to see if there were four there. There may have been four. I love the chimneys on those arms houses, if you can get excited about chimneys. Very nice. And original, I would suggest. Village pub in the background there, Fitzwilliam Arms. More of a restaurant now. In the early 1800s, it was known as the Earl, Fit Earl Fitzwilliam Arms. I think they soon dropped the Earl part of it. Known locally as the Green Man by many because of that topiary on the left. The little green man which really needs tidying up. It doesn't look like a green man now. I'll put a picture up. From not that long ago, it shows it did look like a man once. Less of a case now. I'm not quite sure when the Fitzwilliam Arms dated back to it. It's either 1600s or 1700s. There seems to be mixed reports on that one. Uh, pretty old though. Still looking good whether it's a restaurant or not. The green man doesn't look quite so good but I guess you're limited as to what you can do with it. Opposite the pub, I've seen this building a few times I thought I know what that is, it's an old police house. And I don't know, I don't know why I think that. 
it's not a police house. It just has that sort of feel about it. No disrespect to the owners. It just does look like a police house, but I can't find evidence there ever was one. So it's not symmetrical, semi-detached building. Well, this is the smithy, the left-hand side of this building. Uh, the brown doors would have been open, stable doors for access to it and the smithy building. Well, that is it. Early 1800s. It's not too far to the blacksmith's cottage. That's the smithy and the blacksmith's cottage. It's just in front of that car, really. Just out of sight, around the corner. Makes sense size of the Fitzwilliam Arms you can see the shape that it used to have and what's been added so it's a much smaller building before the Arms Cottages Leaving the village now on Castor Road and uh, on the left we have the village hall. 1974 this one was built but there was an older village hall. I was scrambling to find a photograph and I couldn't find one. Sadly I'd like to have seen that. Um, this one was built in 1974 so it's got a bit of age. Um, getting on for 50 years. Probably is 50 years. Probably lasts a lot longer than the previous one. I guess that's why they built it. A bit more functional. I was about to say, but what's written on the plaque, I think. Elizabeth II, the war was presented to Marham Village by Countess Fitzwilliam to commemorate the first 25 years of the Queen's reign. Yeah, very generous of the uh, Fitzwilliam family to provide a wall to go around the village hall. Why not? Just coming up to the last building really on the walk, which is uh, the old vicarage dating back to 1846 so it sort of kicked in after the old parsonage that we saw earlier uh, it's a lovely Georgian style building but unfortunately it's hidden behind the trees so if I do sneak something I will sneak something otherwise you'll have to make do with a photograph we'll see what we can get away with Go slowly, we might get something. There you go. Lovely Georgian style building. It's not Georgian, but it was made to look it. But very, very nice. 1846, I think, yeah. Because the rectory was uh, empty at the start of the Second World War, it was commandeered by the Royal Corps of Signals, um, which was their sort of HQ here and the ground behind the vicarage, which is all built on now. There's nothing to see. There was a whole range of old huts, um, as you would expect on a wartime site. Would love to have seen that. Again, no photographs, but uh, um, yeah, they used the old vicarage as their base. Tell you what i could live here <laughs> give me a roof and i'd be happy um and all within what half a mile of the breton center you know it's worth getting out and having a walk over this way I, you know i like marham it's got a it's peaceful and it's got a character 
and I suspect that character hasn't changed a lot in hundreds of years and uh, it's got little pockets of historical interest and I love the churchyard. I know it's a churchyard, you shouldn't say perhaps that you should enjoy a churchyard but those gravestones are fantastic pieces of history and the church itself even though it's in bits and pieces is uh, is worth seeing too so uh, I, I quite enjoyed that one and uh, thanks for keeping me company. Um, if, if you haven't already subscribed, I know I keep banging on, but it does make a difference to me. So if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on that little red button down there. There's no money involved. It just means you get a notification of some sort uh, next time a video comes up. And uh, as I say, it means a lot to me. So thanks for keeping me company. I hope you found something of interest. Any comments, whack them underneath the video, either on uh, Peterborough Images or on YouTube. Uh, otherwise, I will see you again next time I'm out. Thanks. Mm -hmm.